This is Sparta! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies based on a true story that got it wrong. Maybe you are a fraud. Maybe it was just about making a buck. Oh, this is good. Studio 6 Productions. For this list, we'll be looking at various movies purportedly based on true stories that skewed and warped the facts. Can you think of any other supposedly true story that played it fast and loose? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Hey. Want more Mojo? Ms. Mojo produces original, high-quality pop culture-related videos on all your favorite movies and shows. Plus, celebrity news, fashion, lifestyle, and more. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Ms. Mojo. My name is Sam. My name is Eliza. And I'm Emily. I'm Rebecca, and welcome to Ms. Mojo. If you want videos on all the best reality shows, teen dramas, Disney movies, and sitcoms, be sure to check out Ms. Mojo for new videos every day. Number 10, Gangs of New York. To defeat my enemy, I extinguish his life and consume him as I consume these flames. This Martin Scorsese epic was based on Herbert Asbury's The Gangs of New York, an informal history of the underworld, which was published in 1927. One of the major departures from reality is the depiction of Bill the Butcher. Bill is based on the historic William Poole, but Poole was murdered a decade before the draft riots began and reportedly never killed anyone. Now you tasted my mutton, how do you like it, huh? In fact, the level of violence in general was often criticized as being a pure Hollywood fabrication. The massive gang fight depicted at the beginning of the film is also entirely fictional, but gang battles did occur on occasion. There were also no Navy ships to quell the riots, and the amount of Chinese Americans in New York was greatly exaggerated. Number 9. Cool Runnings this feel-good comedy concerns the debut of the Jamaican bobsledding team at the 1988 Calgary Winter Olympics. Suffice it to say, it has been very Disney-fied. The biggest fabrication is the bobsled competition itself. Oh, this is good. For one thing, the Jamaican athletes were not treated as outsiders, and the American team even helped them out by lending them a sled. Secondly, the team had absolutely no shot at winning a medal, despite what the movie would have you believe. Now the speed seems too much, and I don't think he's going to be able to hold it. The crash was also not the result of a mechanical failure, but shoddy and inexperienced driving. And that feel-good crossing of the finish line to raucous applause Yeah, it was more of a defeated limp with sporadic and tepid encouragement. A disappointment for them, I'm sure, that they're not able to complete the event. But maybe they should just be thankful that they're able to walk away. Number 8. The Imitation Game In this film, Benedict Cumberbatch portrays Alan Turing, a genius who revolutionized the concept of theoretical computer science and helped decrypt German messages during World War II. Even before the movie was released, it received controversy for downplaying Turing's homosexuality and casting bombshell Kira Knightley as the so-called plain Joan Clark. I, I am a candidate. For what position? I it didn't say precisely. And while Turing did have eccentricities, he wasn't nearly as socially awkward as portrayed in the film. Turing's supposed suicide is also extensively debated to this day, with some experts even claiming that his death was purely accidental. And that's not even touching on all the Enigma inaccuracies, like portraying Turing as a one-man force when he was actually part of a massive collaboration. Well, that's it. Exactly. Number 7. Rudy Despite being an exceptional and inspiring sports movie, Rudy is greatly exaggerated. The story concerns Daniel Rudy Rudiger, a man who desperately wanted to play for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish despite being just 5'6 and 165 pounds. A massive deviation concerns coach Dan Devine and the famous Jersey protest scene. Devine was greatly vilified for the movie, but by all accounts, he was actually very encouraging. That whole laying down the jerseys thing also never happened, and Devine told the Houston Chronicle that it, and his role in it, were unforgivable. For Rudy, coach. The crowd also never chanted Rudy's name before he was placed in the game. That said, he did actually record a sack, and was carried off the field, so that's pretty cool. Number 6. A Beautiful Mind this Russell Crowe-led film was adapted from a Pulitzer-nominated biography of famed mathematician John Nash Jr. 
Nash suffered greatly from mental illness and was eventually treated for paranoid schizophrenia. And while the movie stayed true to the spirit of Nash's story, it ignored a few key details. I need a map. In 1953, Nash fathered an illegitimate child with Eleanor Steer and went on to ignore both Eleanor and their son. When they finally met in person, an ill Nash thought his son would play, quote, an essential and significant role in his personal long-awaited gay liberation. You are exceptionally odd. I bet you're very popular with the girls. He also didn't have a good relationship with Alicia Lard, and he was not asked to give a Nobel Prize acceptance speech owing to his mental instability. My quest has taken me through the physical, the metaphysical, the delusional, back. Number 5. Argo There's no denying that Argo is an exceptionally made movie. Its seven Oscar nominations can attest to that. But it's nowhere near historically accurate. The film was accused of whitewashing in the casting of Tony Mendez and Cora Liek. It was also fiercely criticized for exaggerating the CIA's role in the caper, with ex-president Jimmy Carter even admitting that, quote, 90% of the contributions to the ideas and the consummation of the plan was Canadian. Britain and New Zealand were also cheesed with their depictions, as they never turned away the American refugees. Brits turned them away, Kiwis turned them away, Canadians took them in. In fact, they helped them. And finally, the tense climactic moment where it seems like the group will be caught? Yeah, none of that happened either. Studio Six Productions. They got away without any problems. They're clear. <laughs> yes! Yes! Number four, Pearl Harbor. Where to even start with Pearl Harbor? This is a Michael Bay film through and through, relying on action and bombast and throwing all semblance of historical accuracy out the window. But let's get specific. The Japanese never intentionally targeted the hospital. The depiction of the Doolittle raid is near total fabrication. President Roosevelt wasn't notified of the attack by a man dramatically running into the room. How bad. It's still not over, sir. Chester Nimitz and George Marshall actually advocated a retaliatory strike on Japan. And then we veer into the absolute ridiculous. Roosevelt obviously never stood from his wheelchair in a dramatic show of will, and the movie stole Admiral Yamayoto's iconic sleeping giant line from Tora Tora Tora. By all accounts, he never actually said that. Number 3. 300. The Battle of Thermopylae makes for a great story, but 300 is pure comic book, which makes sense considering it was adapted from a comic book. Spartans were not walking around shirtless and showing off their impeccable washboard abs. They were most certainly armored. There also weren't 300 Spartan men at the battle. It was more like 6,000 Greek soldiers comprising numerous city-states. The movie was also criticized for its idealized depiction of Sparta and for whittling down a complex situation into a good guys versus bad guys morality tale. Ephialtes was also a normal Malian, not a grotesque Spartan outcast. Mother! Father! You were wrong! That said, the movie clearly isn't taking itself very seriously, so we suppose we can forgive it. Spartans! Ready your breakfast and eat hearty. But tonight, we dine in hell! Number 2. The Greatest Showman It may have been made before the acquisition, but this Fox film already felt Disney-fied. The Greatest Showman concerns legendary huckster P.T. Barnum and his infamous American Museum. This is definitely a feel-good story in which Barnum is portrayed as a flawed but well-meaning businessman, and his attractions sing empowering songs about nobility and being different. In reality, Barnum was more exploitative than tolerant, using the so-called freaks as pure showbiz for his own fame and profit. You know, people aren't going to like it if you put us on stage. Oh, I'm counting on it. He also exploited egregious racial stereotypes, like promoting the frail Joyce Heff as George Washington's 161-year-old Mammy. When she passed away, Barnum charged 1,500 New Yorkers 50 cents each to watch her public autopsy. Barnum certainly deserves a movie, but The Greatest Showman ain't it. 
Maybe you are a fraud. Maybe it was just about making a buck. But you gave us a real family. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Catch me if you can. Frank conned people because he wanted to, not to save his family. I'm getting it all back. All, all, all the jewelry, all the furs, everything, and everything they took from us, I'm gonna get it back. Remember the Titans. The Titans absolutely dominated, and none of the schools they faced were all white. What you did with those boys, you were the right man for the job, coach. Your Hall of Fame in my book. U571. The story received heaps of criticism for being a load of fictional baloney. The Sound of Music. That iconic trek through the Swiss Alps never happened. They got a train. Good Morning Vietnam. Very little of the film is based in reality, and Cronauer was never kicked out of Vietnam. Cronauer, I'm sorry as hell about this thing. God damn it, I like you, son. I like what you do. Most of all, I like what you've done for men. But facts, facts. This could give the army a black eye. I'm not going to cover for you this time, son. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Braveheart Mel Gibson's classic war film is certainly epic, but it has very little basis in historic reality. The portrayals of numerous characters, including Wallace, Isabella, Robert the Bruce, and Prince Edward, are all fabricated for story purposes. For example, Isabella was just three years old during the Battle of Falkirk. I have come to beg for the life of William Wallace. You're quite taken with him, aren't you? The numerous battles and military campaigns are portrayed inaccurately. The occupation of Scotland wasn't occurring throughout William's life, it only happened one year before his rebellion. For one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! The movie is filled with anachronisms, like the use of belted plaids. Longshanks never invoked Jus Primae Noctis, as that didn't actually exist. First night, when any common girl inhabiting their lands is married, our nobles shall have sexual rights to her on the night of her wedding. All told, Braveheart is far more Hollywood fiction than history. At least Mel Gibson admits as much in the DVD commentary. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.